what is going on, lovely individuals out there in the world? So, firstly, enjoy this lovely transistor theme while I speak. So, I am going to try to just kind of introduce this. Um, I am going to try at this point to, like, actively write down things that interest me enough to talk about, that I think I got enough to say on the topic, to kind of do, like, a weekly podcast-ish kind of a thing obviously it's not a podcast because i'm posting this on youtube and it's video but um just you know give y'all something to listen to in the background and just you know maybe it'll be interesting maybe it won't we'll see how it goes so let's get right into it the first thing i want to talk about monster hunter 4 ultimate i think that's what the u stand i don't actually know if that's what the u stands for but i think it is um it's unfortunate i understand why capcom did it but I am a little bit saddened that it didn't come out on the Wii U. Because if it had, honestly, that would have pushed me over, like, the edge. Of like, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to start looking for good prices for a Wii U at this point. Because there's enough stuff. Like, I'm interested. I'm slightly interested in Smash Brothers. Um, obviously, it has Bayonetta 2, which I would absolutely love to play. Um, I'm interested in the Wind Waker remake because I've never actually played... Um, I've never really played any of the Zelda games in depth. The only ones I've tried were the ones that came out on the Wii. And unfortunately, almost every single Nintendo uh, first-party release that came out on the Wii included some form of motion control. Like, in uh, one of the games, I actually, I've been, I've been eBaying it up a bit, a little bit. And I've gotten a bunch of classic, um, not really classic, but I've gotten a bunch of older games for good prices like i got super mario galaxy 1 and 2 for 12 dollars um i got new super mario brothers wii for like six um i'm fine it's, i got some good stuff so i tried the new super mario brothers wii and one of the uh, some of the commands require you to you know, like shake the controller around or tilt the controller or that kind of thing and it's just like god this is not it's okay to do like once or twice but i'm getting way off topic here <laughs> It's okay to do once or twice, but like with Mad World. Mad World, I believe, would have been an amazing game on any other console that did not have motion controls. But for what it was, and because of the existence of the motion controls, it was like the most fun experience I've ever had for 30 minutes. And then once you get over that initial like, oh my god, I am doing all of these awesome motions to do all of these sweet looking kills... And then it's kind of like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep doing this for like ten more hours, the same exact motions every single time. There's no way to get around this. This is fucking stupid now. And that's how motion controls are to me. They're a gimmick. They're not an interesting. They have not evolved into ha <laughs> evolved. They have not evolved into an interesting facet of gameplay yet. And so I haven't really played a lot of Nintendo games because the first Nintendo console I ever owned was the Wii. And so it included a bunch of motion controls. And so I, you know, when they're doing these remakes or now they're doing, you know, all these other games that no longer include motion controls, sometimes it requires gamepad functionality, but that's nowhere near as bad as having to, you know, like shake the fucking stick like you're masturbating or something like that. And so now I'm kind of interested in that kind of thing. And Monster Hunter 4 would have been the game that like pushed me over the threshold. It was like, you know what, man, it's time, it's time to, it's time to pony up and grab yourself a Wii U at this point in time. But I understand why they didn't do it because um, obviously Monster Hunter is vastly more popular in Japan. It is a, like it is a money maker in Japan. It's getting more popular here, slowly and surely. People are getting more interested in it. And I would say, actually, the explosion of Dark Souls uh, actually would help Monster Hunter a lot. Because Monster Hunter is very similar. Um, not really in terms of atmosphere, but in terms of, like, you know, difficult uh, boss battles, difficult gameplay, that kind of thing. And then, you know, you can make your own gear, all that shit. Uh, so there are some similarities there that I think would draw some interest to Monster Hunter. But in terms of where it's actually really selling right now, that is, n and there's no question about it, it's Japan. And Japan has been moving away from consoles for a while now. Like, ever since, basically, the Xbox 360 PS3 era, they have been slowly just losing all interest in consoles, and now everything there is portable stuff, whether or not it's phones, tablets, or, you know, like, the PlayStation Vita, Nintendo 3DS, 
all that stuff. So I understand why Capcom didn't release it on the Wii U, but it's still a bit of a disappointment for me. I just wanted to talk about that. So, let's talk about a little bit more of Monster Hunter 4. So, and a little bit, it's not really technically to do with Monster Hunter 4, but it's more to do with scalpers. Fucking scalpers. So I am staring at the, uh, GameStop had a specific 3DS. A Monster Hunter version of 3DS has some really cool looking artwork and it comes with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate preloaded onto it. And it's the new version of it. It's the new, that has the C-Stick and uh, it has like ZL and ZR buttons on the back and what, you know, like it's a little bit bigger. Um, it includes extra functionality and some games uh, that are coming up and I assume more games in the future once developers see, you know, like, oh, we can really uh, use this in a compelling way are going to require that. So I was, you know, looking around just to see what they have available for it right now because I'm not really too interested in, again, it's the same thing, like there's no real reason for me to get it right now, but it'll be useful for the future. And so I see that um, GameStop has an exclusive 3DS XL system for Monster Hunter. And so I look into it and I'm like, oh man, they sold out. I found out about it like basically like three days too late. Um. So they sold out of, out, out of it. They don't have any physical copies in their stores anymore. Like, they're all gone. And so I just check eBay on a whim. There are over 100 hits for Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate 3DS XL going for almost twice the listed, pri the listed price. Like, you can, uh, if you go to GameStop's website right now, it's listed as $229.99. I have not seen a single listing of it on eBay with less than a day left that was not at 350 or more dollars and I, I I understand it happens every single launch people are immediately trying to sell like people will pre-order five of these and like sell four of them on eBay I understand that that happens but I fucking hate it because like so many people end up either missing out on something that they would have absolutely loved and like really really wanted but they didn't get it because some asshole decided they wanted to make a quick buck on ebay and that kind of it, just, it irks me it irks me so much so long story short if any of you guys happen to have an extra uh nintendo 3ds xl monster hunter 4 ultimate edition version hit a brother up <laughs> it's just, uh, i really i i oh it just it irks me so anyway, on to the next topic of discussion, which is the game we're staring at right now. Well, the game menu we're staring at right now. Evolve. Is it... And I'm going to kind of get on... I'm going to actually have to switch the order around on something here real quick because it kind of flows into one or the other. Is it just me, though, or are games getting just more and more disappointing as time goes on? Like, I don't know if I'm just kind of growing out of it or whether or not... It's because, like, I've had so many experiences in games already that I just... Oh, wow, I'm actually going to have to switch everything around. These actually... These will all flow together very nicely. So, I don't know if it's just because, you know, I've played so many games now that there really aren't any new experiences left for me. Or if it's just because developers just have kind of lost their way with game design and they've kind, they're kind of sacrificing fun for what they think will be more mainstream. I don't know what the problem is. I just know that so many games now, Dragon Age Inquisition, easily my least favorite Dragon Age. I have easily my least favorite Bioware game, period. Um, I have absolutely zero interest in replaying it. I beat it and I'm just, I'm done with it. I don't want to play it again. There was nothing interesting about that game. It was like, it's the same exact thing to me. Now, I know Xenoblade Chronicles is like this mass... It got so much praise. I hated that game because it was basically designed as a single-player MMO. Boring-ass fetch quests everywhere. Nothing really interesting um, about the storyline. Maybe there was something further along because I only got like two hours into Xenoblade Chronicles versus actually beating Dragon Age Inquisition. So maybe Xenoblade Chronicles got better like ten hours in. But Dragon Age Inquisition never got better for me. There were never any moments where I was like, oh my god, this is why I bought this game. This is why I'm playing this game. It was just kind of, eh, it's something to do all of this time. Watch Dogs. 
that was, well, now granted, Watch Dogs has not received any praise whatsoever. Like, Dragon Age Inquisition won game of the fucking year. I don't know why. Because I really, I mean, it's just, it's coming from my perspective. Like, this is just not a very fun game. It's very well designed. Everything looks great. The worlds are big. But there's nothing compelling to do in them. That was where I was coming from. And so, but like, Watch Dogs got shit on everywhere, and it, that was, ah, I'm still sad, I bought, I actually bought that, I think I bought the season pass for that game, and I'd never use, I don't even know what DLC is included on there, but I stopped playing Watch Dogs after like three or four hours, so it's just lately games are just not drawing me in the way they used to, and Evolve is another one of those, where I feel like this game could be so much more, but they're focused on the wrong things, I guess, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if it's because, you know, obviously the DLC system they have set up for this game is a problem. If you go look at Steam, right, I'm actually gonna go look at Steam right now, just to see exactly how many uh, reviews they have, but they have a shit ton of bad reviews. It's something like, um, like, maybe a third, two-fifths, some, somewhere in the 30 to 40 percent range of the reviews. Really? Have you took Evolve off of my front page? Shit, Evolve is no longer there. Some bitch. Well, I don't really want to, I'm not going to spend enough time to track it down. Um, so, it has some, the last time I looked, it had something like 5,000 reviews and like, 30, you know, actually never mind, 30% was a bit too much. It had something like 30, 3,200 were positive and like 1,800 were negative. Something like that. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, that's not, 30% is not too low for those numbers, you idiot. <laughs> Moving on! Um, uh, so it, almost all of the negative reviews are like, yo, this game is fun, but they ruined it with DLC. And I don't really disagree with that. Like, the fact that they put in... Like, they have plans for DLC hunters, DLC monsters. Um, they have DLC maps, but they aren't going to charge for those. Because they said, you know, like, if they charge for them, they're going to end up splitting the community down the middle. Well, not down the middle, because I doubt pe many people are going to be buying them if they did put them up for uh, sale. But they would be splitting the community, you know, these people can play in the DLC maps, these people can't. So they're actually releasing any DLC maps for free, but, like, they have a bunch of... Now, I don't mind the, like, because right now most of what's available for uh, DLC is all just various skins, different sprite stuff. <laughs> this game doesn't use sprites. Different character models, colors, and whatnot. That's mostly what's up for sale now. Now, I don't care if you put that kind of stuff up for sale. Stuff that's cosmetic. Stuff that's just like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'll pony up for that. That's fine. But when you're offering completely additional characters, additional monsters to fight against, now that's where I'm kind of starting to get to a point where I'm like, yeah, that's a little much. Like, you know, you're, you're banning me from playing, like, a third or more of your game depending upon how many they release putting it behind a paywall when I've already bought the game and that is very ooh, like I that that bothers me that that happened um so I will admit I do have my own qualms with the DLC system they have set up we'll see how it all pans out but yeah they're definitely gotten a lot of bad press over their DLC stuff already so and it's just you know companies are doing that more and more um or they're releasing like they're getting pushed too hard because the pro the cost of making a game now is just exponentially growing higher and higher. And so, so many game studios are beholden to a publisher that is only interested in the money. They only care about the dollar signs. They don't play games themselves. They don't understand games themselves. They don't realize how buggy games can be. And so, they're just, you know, they come out and they're like, yo... We gave you all this money. You said it would be done by this point in time. Get it out there. We don't care what all your problems are. Don't give us your list of all the bugs that are in the game. Don't give us your list of all the things you can still do that you still want to do to make the game a perfect experience. We don't give a shit. 
we'll advertise it like all that shit's in the games to get people interested, and then we'll throw it out the door. Who cares what they think about it after they bought it? Right, like that's the general mindset of the normal publisher. And the game studios don't have any say in it. Because they take the publisher's money. They have no choice. They don't have enough they don't have a deep enough bank account to handle it all themselves. And so that's why you get a lot of this kind of shit where it's like, yo, this game could be so much more. I guarantee you the game developers know that just as well as you do. And they want it to be so much more. But they had no choice. And, you know, the more and more technology comes out, the more resources become available, the more this shit's going to keep costing and the more this is going to happen. And so, again, like I said, I was actually going to talk about Evol my, all my personal problems with Evolve, but I got kind of off on a little bit of a tangent there. And so I am going to just talk about my problems with Evolve while playing Evolve. And we're going to move on to, again, another topic that kind of hits on this. Order 1886. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen the stories about this game. Somebody got their hands on the game early. And they posted up a playthrough of it on YouTube. And it took them five hours to beat the game. And out of those five hours, half of it was cinematics. That you can't do anything during. You can't, Apparently they were also unskippable. I have not seen it myself. Um, I have only seen the um, the stories about it because I have no interest in actually sitting down and watching it. But Order 1886 was definitely a game where I was like, again, this is a game that looks cool. Looks like it could really make a good use of the next generation systems. It was one of the first games they showed off at uh, E3. The first time they were showing off Xbox One and PlayStation 4 stuff. And boy, is that looking to shape up to another massive disappointment. And it's just like, all of these games now is, people are trying to cash in on hype, but not delivering. Everybody is becoming a Peter Molyneux or Molyneux of the world, where they're promising the sun and then they end up giving you a light bulb. It's terrible. He actually just got shit on a bunch too. I guess one of his uh, most recent downloadable games, he said like, the first person to reach uh, X status in my game will be like, you know, paid a bunch of money to have like a, a part of themselves. Um, oh, you know what it was? It was a new God game and the person was supposed to be like an available God or something like that. And they would get paid for it. And the person never got any of that delivered. Like they just cut off contact with him. They completely stop. Like they have no, in I guess they have no interest in continuing along with you know, their promises and everything they said about that. So he's in the shitter again. And it's just, you know, everybody think I don't know if it's just because people open their mouths and they talk about their dreams and what they want it to be before they realize the limitations that they have. Like, they don't have the time to do it, they don't have the money to do it, or they just don't have the ability to do it. Whatever. But, man, just so many people are failing at delivering on their promises lately and order 1886 is just another prime example of that again and it's really it's people i know i've seen a lot of talk about uh people like completely stopping pre-ordering obviously they're not going to stop it entirely but when you get a massive enough group of people to actually make a splash on the radar of pre-orders we're like yo pre-orders are down like 20 percent from last year that's gonna be noticed and people are talking about that they're saying like stop pre-ordering games we're getting fucked over too often we're getting drawn into advertisement hype but then it doesn't deliver um assassin's creed it's actually ubisoft in general i think has been a prime example of this but they released like what three assassin's creed games last year i didn't buy a single one of them. i didn't play i didn't buy i completely ignored those games because I am sick and tired of playing the same game with the same fucking problems, with the same fucking glitches over and over. Assassin's Creed 3 was one of the most glitchiest experiences I have ever played in my life. Assassin's Creed 4 was better, but it still had its problems. And I'm just, I'm sick of Assassin's Creed and I'm so sick of Ubisoft. Oh, and so like, I do agree with it. I do agree with the no pre-order thing. There are certain games that like, no matter what... I will pre-order. Atlas, in general, is kind of a company that, like, if they come out with an RPG, I'm gonna fucking pre-order it. 
Persona 5 is coming up. Uh, Etrian Odyssey Mystery Dungeon. I have never been let down by an Etrian Odyssey game. It is different. Um, it's very... It's not like the previous Etrian Odyssey games. Uh, it's more of like a tactical kind of... I'm trying to think of how... I don't think there's any games. Lufia is the first game that comes to mind that it looks like. Where you're running around... Well, no, because that one was still turn-based. I don't know, but it's not like the Etrian Odyssey games. But I still don't think they're going to disappoint me at all. And it's just, in general, I feel like... With Atlas, I'm always set. Bloodborne 2. Those are the two games that I have pre-ordered right now. Bloodborne and Etrian Odyssey Mystery Dungeon. And I actually looked at uh, games coming up. And man, it's just it's a barren wasteland right now for me. Let me tell you. So... Now we're moving on again to kind of, an, again, another similar topic. Remasters. That quick buck cashing in on the success of a previous generation's games. Like, I don't know why this has exploded as it has. I don't know if it's because of The Last of Us. I don't know. Actually, I don't even know if that game was successful. Or, again, it could be because of The Wind Waker HD, because I'm pretty sure that was very successful. But there have been so many remasters, and now again another one. Uh, so THQ, they went out of business, they went bankrupt a while ago, and they sold all of their IPs, all of their properties. Darksiders was one of them. And I think the studio that got Darksiders was Nordic Games or something. They've been talking about like, yo, we don't want to let Darksiders die. We want to give you guys more Darksiders. We are uh, very... Uh, interested and invested in this series and we are going to get the fans hyped up for a Darksiders 2 remaster really no Darksiders 3 like maybe you know maybe they're trying to do a Darksiders 2 remaster in order to uh, build up funds for Darksiders 3 but it's just there's no interest I've done everything there is to do in Darksiders 2 I've done every, not everything there, I didn't play Darksiders 1 as much as I did 2, but I did mostly everything that you could do in Darksiders 1. I don't have, number one, I don't have the time to sit down and play games that I've already beaten, already finished with, there's nothing new going to be presented there. I'm done with it. So remasters have, there is nothing there for me. Remasters right now are like early access games for Steam users. It's just nah. -uh. I have no interest in it. Come back to me when you have a real product. Because <laughs> that doesn't fucking qualify. It is bugging me how, like, literally half the library of Xbox One and PS4 right now, probably even more than that, is remastered games. It's fucking killing me. Oh my god, I hate it. It's just, it's bugging the shit out of me. I really just want to, like, the next time I see a remaster, I'm going to buy a plane ticket. To the city that that studio was held in and I'm just gonna walk in there and just like staple a fucking like thesis paper to whoever made that call and just make them walk around all day with that shit stapled all over their body and I will just you know assuming it's a person of the male uh, specimen it's a male specimen I will put an extra paper right on that dude's balls that says, stop remastering games. Make something worth fucking while. It's bugging the hell out of me. I hate it. And there's just... It's so disappointing when it's like, new game announcement! It's an old game that's going to look slightly better. Great. Now that isn't to say, again, like, if Capcom came out and was like, yo! We're remastering Breath of Fire. For the PS4. I'd be like, shit! I'm going to be interested in that, but when it's like, guys, we're remastering Street Fighter 4 for the PS4. Who gives a shit? I've been playing that game for five years, six years now. I don't care about it. <laughs> Give me new, I mean, granted that obviously they actually do have a PS4 version of Street Fighter 4 coming out, don't they? To, uh, it comes out before Street Fighter 5, I think. God damn it. I meant that as a joke. I was just like, what's the closest, like, what's the, uh, what's a cap popular Capcom game that I can take and grab and just use as an example? But now that I think about it, I'm fairly certain Street Fighter 4 is getting a PS4 and Xbox One release. Son of a bitch. Well, while we're on the topic, this is the last topic I got. While we're on, 
while we're speaking of fighting games, Guilty Gear X Third 1.1. I hate Arc System Works for doing this, and I understand. I get that like <laughs> Arc System Works as a company could not care less about like the rest of the world outside Japan. I feel. Just because their decisions are so, I don't know, Japan-centric, I guess. Like, everything is based around timing in Japan. Everything swirls around Japan's arcade scene. So it's like, I don't know if maybe, you know, like, Guilty Gear Xard's, um arcade scene is starting to dwindle now. And so they're like, yo, now let's put out a new patch and get people interested again. But it bugs the fuck out of me because you have all these people... Uh, I don't know about all these people, but I know there are a pretty decent amount of Japanese people confirmed as coming to EVO to play either uh, Persona 4 Ultimax or uh, Guilty Gear Xard, and both of them are going to have to deal with a game that is old to them, because we don't have either of the new versions in America yet, and I don't think we're going to get them before EVO. And so, you know, like, these people that have been playing probably, I, I don't know how long, uh, 2.0 has been out for Ultimax so far, but I would say like two months maybe would be around a you know decent guess. So by the time Evo rolls around, they're gonna have been playing a completely different version of the game for almost seven months. Um, and then they're gonna have to come in here and go back to a version they're unfamiliar with, a version they no longer have muscle memory for, and that's just terrible. And it's even worse with Guilty Gear XR because, like, again, 1.1, they're doing low tests for it right now. I believe it's announced it's coming. I don't know if it's in March or April, but it's going to be coming out then, which gives them three or four months of time to get used to a brand new game where they, well, well, where they either have to get used to a brand new game and then come over here and play a completely different version, or they just have to avoid the arcades because they want to win EVO. Those are their only choices, and it sucks. I really just cannot begin to describe, like, how much I really despise uh, Arc System Works in general at the moment. Because of their release time frame, where it's like, they released this game in arcades. Six months later, six months or more later, they announce a console version. And then the console version will come out within, like, you know a month or two in Japan and they have to localize it for the rest of the world and so it'll come out you know like three four anywhere between like three to six months later in uh, America anywhere between three to six years later in Europe <sighs> poor Europe um and it's just by the time it comes out here we get a month with it and they're like hey rebalance patch you guys haven't even been able to experience the game yet but fuck all y'all Rebalance patch! Yeah! Fuck you! And it's just... Every single game. They have three active games right now that are going that have either just gone through a patch or are going through a new patch. Extend for Blaze Blue, 2.0 for Ultimax, and now 1.1 for Xard. And it's just it's killing me, man. Like there is something to be said for a constantly evolving game. It keeps it maintains your interest. But the problem is, is that, like, so many people are just sitting back, like, why should I give a shit about this game, when we all know an extend version is gonna be right around the fucking corner, is gonna change everything up, and maybe I'll just buy that one, or maybe I'll buy the other one. Like, for me, I'm skipping extend for Blaze Blue. I am not playing that game, I'm not interested in it, in my opinion, uh, they removed the fun factor of basically every character I am interested in, and so, like, I don't give a shit if Tager is A tier. He's not fun for me anymore. All of his design is not enjoyable for me anymore. His design is boring. Asriel, they removed a lot of the fun things about him, and now he's just very he's very straightforward. He was already pretty straightforward, but now even more so. He's even less kind of like you have to do this. You have to do this in this situation. There's no flexibility. There's no choice here. There's no you know like if you go for an upper weak point, you now lost all of your Oki versus going for a lower weak point. Um, and then you can run your mix up from there, blah, blah, blah. Those choices are basically gone. They have made the decision for you. You can't do a JD mid-screen anymore because JD mid-screen knocks them way the fuck over to the corner. And now you're not on top of them anymore, which is the only place you want to be as Asriel. 
And so it's, you know, they've removed the fun factor. And so I'm not interested in that game anymore. And Like, I'm more interested in 2.0 just because of the absolute hilarity that Shadow characters now bring to that game because it looks fucking hilarious. Like, they have gone full-blown. Like, they have embraced a game of simplicity and imbalance. And I appreciate what they're going for there. If that's what they're going for. Maybe they're just doing it mistakenly and that's even more hilarious. But... I don't know. I don't. It's just, Arc System Works is kind of just over and over, just kind of letting me down. And so we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. We'll see if there are any new characters announced for 1.1. I don't. Think there have been. There's no way they're actually. There's no way they're gonna put a new character into 1.1 because that's what two months away. They can't design a new character in two months. Especially they can't keep a character hidden that's in design. I don't think that's pot. I don't think they could do that. So anyway, that that's my talk for today. I kind of kept that almost to 30 minutes. So that'd be a good timeline. Try to keep it to 30 minutes. So, hope y'all enjoyed what I had to say. Maybe you agree with it. Maybe you don't. Let me fucking know. Bring me different viewpoints. Maybe you'll come at it from an angle I hadn't thought about. And I'll be able to change my mind. That's, that's, that's the glory of rational discussion. Sometimes somebody introduces a thought process that you never thought about. So who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to go get my ass kicked in Evolve. Or I'm going to miss the stop recording button. Son of a bitch.